victories. We call this corner Spanish Lagao. We cleared the land and sowed crops of grain. March 2008 marks 50 years since the first two groups of the Kleine Gemeinde Mennonite settlers left their farms in Quellen Colony in the state of Chihuahua in northern Mexico and made the cumbersome trip to a strange and unknown land, British Honduras. Many have referred to the Mennonite people as a wandering people, as history records many migrations. Though the reasons may be varied, one reason remains central for each migration that of being able to live according to their religious beliefs. The Mennonite Church began in Holland in the 16th century by a former Roman Catholic priest, Menno Simons. During the days of Menno Simons, thousands were martyred for their faith. Many fled to other places, leaving homes and properties behind. They sought a sanctuary that offered greater tolerance and freedom to worship God and educate their children in the Christian faith. But all too often, their young men were being required to serve in the military of their respective governments, and so many found themselves migrating to other countries. Many migrated to southern Russia in the late 1700s and early 1800s, and then to Canada. The Canadian government granted them a charter of privileges, and they enjoyed the religious freedom that they so longed for. The Mennonites began to prosper in Canada, but after World War II, not even 50 years after the Mennonites left Russia, the Canadian government wanted to reform the Mennonite school system in order to make it uniform with the Canadian system. Because the Canadian government wanted to control the school system, many of the Mennonite schools were overcrowded. Our um, school was very small. We had too many children in the school. So I had to say that for seven years we but seven years, with Eva, then I went on the school to go. I had one year I was old, but the school was too full. I had to two years on the school to go in Canada. What I did, they wanted to go to school where my Christian was taught and school was taught and my Dutch was taught. The Kleine Gemeinde Mennonites left Canada in 1948 and migrated by train to Mexico. All that, I don't know, as we were in the hospital, then came the search with the question, with the church, and then we went with the truck to Kotemak, and we asked us the question, we had a model D John Deere with a steel rod, and we had spawned down a few trailers here, and we asked the question up, and then we stuck it with the truck with the steel rod, from Kotema to Kvalen Colony. Okay, we were from Canada, we were from Canada, and we were nine years old, and we were young, and we were from Canada, 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 and we were from Canada. The arid climate resulted in low crop yields, and sometimes an occasional total crop failure. Okay, and then in Mexico, we saw we ran to Acre and that changed that it will not show for on the Vassaria, we had it on the Vassaria and that will mess not hard to see when Schleswig decide we know the least to try. However, with a mixed farming operation and some industry as a sideline, most families had a moderate income. All done that we won't be doing off in Mexico and in store what the mom had to Zasta had already gemacht. Det vi då är på väg vunna en anbud för att ans för det vi ans från till en hisby en trakad då en en dåt vieran då har du behåll vad du nöm en jag vet inte hur lång det är när du vunt har du dan bild vi ans när han gör att det hiss en vi har blivit till ju en Mexico i vunt när han trakar nu blivit. The climate of my state in Mexico seemed short. After only eight years, several factors became of major concern to the Mennonites, including that the Mexican government seemed disorganized about land tenure, which was not guaranteed. The Mexican government also sought to reform the school system, as well as curtail the purchase of fertile land by the Mennonites. 
The net result was that a large number of Mennonites, Klein de Gemeinde, and Old Colony decided to move to another country. John D. Friesen was one of the Klein de Gemeinde colony leaders who did some research on the possibility of moving from Mexico to British Honduras. Friesen and the other leaders had heard about a man named Peter H. Weep, who had been to British Honduras. They questioned him about the country and learned about the similarities between Canada and Belize. Had we heard from Belize that we are the English regering and they had the, the Queen, Ook Eva said Eva cracks as Canada had, that they sich foot to sich here, there the stuff is there, it goes not here, it's 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 here. Peter F. Friesen and John D. Friesen traveled to British Honduras along with Peter H. W. Weed in March of 1957 just to visit the country. They came on their own expense. They were not sent by the church. Peter Friesen took a bus and visited Central Farm in the western part of the country and returned to the rest of the group very excited. He described to the others the large orange orchards and herds of cattle in lush green pastures that he had seen. He was convinced that the country had fine opportunities for agriculture. Upon arriving back in Mexico, Peter F. Friesen and John D. Friesen held a public meeting in which they gave reports of their findings. On the 12th of August 1957, a delegation of 13 left Mexico and came to British Honduras to scout out this country. This group of delegates were comprised of five members from the Klein and Mind Mennonites and eight from the Old Colony. John D. Friesen, brothers Abraham J. and David J. Thiessen, Peter J. Dweck, and Peter D. Reimer. These men received financial support for their trip to British Honduras. The men traveled from Mexico City and within 24 hours, they crossed the border into British Honduras. They arrived in Belize City later that day and headed for the Solomon House. As they sat down for their first meal in a British Honduras restaurant, not many of them had a liking for the cow food soup that was served. On Sunday morning, they visited the Nazarene Church for worship service as it was close to the Solomon House. As the men started to explore the country, they came across Freddie Hunter's dairy farm, which was located 12 miles northwest of Belize City. This was of interest to them because Mr. Hunter was fetching a good price for his bottled milk in Belize City. As they continued their explorations, they came across a government-operated rice field. The group soon became acquainted with the Minister of Mines and Natural Resources, the Honorable George Cadle Price, who eventually became the first Premier and then Prime Minister of Belize. Mr. Price had a friend, Mr. Emery King, who was involved in real estate. Mr. King, it turned out, had been very interested in attracting a large group of Mennonite farmers to British Honduras. He began to organize and accompany the group of Mennonite delegates on their tour of the country. As the group made various visits to orchards and plantations, they became impressed with the enthusiastic attitude towards farming that they found in the country. They even had the opportunity to attend a grand supper at the Fort George Hotel, where they met government officials, dignitaries, and even Governor Turnley. However, the issue of whether or not the colonial government would grant the Mennonites a charter of privileges or privileum was still of great concern. The group went to investigate a tract of land known as Cotton Tree Bank, which was located 42 miles west of Belize City on the north side of the Belize River. After that, the group went to investigate another tract of land called Rock Dundo, located further to the west. However, these lands were not very appealing to the group. The delegates then went on another trip, this time to inspect the tract of land at Blue Creek in the northwestern portion of the country. It was owned by an American, Louis Kirchhoff. The old colony delegates seemed to be sold on Blue Creek, but the Klein Jemaine delegates wanted to see Spanish Lookout, located 6 to 5 miles west of Belize City. Though this tract of land only consisted of 18,000 acres, it was on a higher level than any of the other tracts that they had seen so far. 
The group also observed that the tract was hilly and had a heavy loam soil, while nearer to the river, the soil was sandier and therefore more suitable for cultivation. As the group sat on the banks of the river in the evening, they truly hoped that this tract of land was for sale. It happened that the land was owned by an elderly lady, Mrs. Anne Byrne. She owned straight down to Duck Run was hers. And on this side, she owned from the creek to um, Tabacal. It's she, her son and her husband. They used to do chicle and mahogany. I bought this land from her. Mrs. Anne Byrne was ill and unable to manage her affairs and so had turned all her responsibilities over to her daughter, Mrs. Olga Cooper. Mrs. Cooper didn't want to make a deal on this land while her mother remained alive. Yet the group felt that no other tract of land suited their purpose, like the Spanish lookout tract, and they were sure that God would provide a way. After a month of traveling around British Honduras, the group was able to narrow down their options to the Spanish lookout tract. They came to look at lands first. We had that land up for sale. And it was through the bank that they got it. And they came and looked around. It was primitive. And this was the place they liked best. They then returned to Chihuahua, Mexico with the good news. In December, Peter D. Reimer and Bishop Cornelius R. E. Reimer made one final trip to British Honduras to hold final consultations with the Belizean officials. At the end of these successful consultations, the privilegium was signed. We have on the privilegium, the men as well, they are ready to pay the costs and expenses incurred in establishing their own settlement. Uh, number B, produce food and only for themselves, not only for themselves, but also for local consumption and for the export market. Next one, C, conduct themselves as good citizens and subject as this agreement observe and obey the laws of British Honduras. D, they will they are ready to pay all normal duties, taxes, fees and custom duty, land tax, estate duty, property tax and income tax. Uh, it is understood and agreed that the privilege granted by the government shall be enjoyed by the Mennonites and their descendants for all time, as so long as the Mennonites observe and fulfill the conditions opposed them by this agreement. Shortly after this, Mrs. Ann Byrne passed away and the 18,000 acre tract was purchased for 5.34 US dollars per acre. A sawmill, which belonged to the Bedrans and Espats, which was located on a portion of the land, was also purchased for some $10,000. Mr. Emery King and the Royal Bank Manager, Mr. Brown, did their utmost best so the deal could be finalized. The Nord family was also very instrumental in allocating this tract of land. They came to the bank and then the bank got in touch with my husband but they never had enough money and they made arrangements with the bank to make payments for them. What they had apparently was not enough so they had to borrow. Back in Mexico, in many homes, the decision arose of whether to migrate to British Honduras or stay in Mexico. In short order, auction sales started to make their appearance on Quellin Colony and the first two trucks were loaded with possessions to be taken to Belize. Well, you know, in, in Coctemoc, Chihuahua, Mexico, Hawaii's, we had to go to the and I was a young young and I didn't feel so I think I must Ich muss hier an rein, muss da sein Boot und einpacken und hertragen. Und das wird sehr verschieden hier. Da wird sich elf Jahre alt werden. Und dann äh, muss ich meine Eltern ausrufen und äh, reisen nach British Honduras. Ab dem Zug und dann wieder ab dem Traktor in den Busch. Und dann kommen wir bei der Polizei. The first seven families left at 9 a.m. on March 5, 1958. They consisted of the families of Peter F. Friesen, Jake D. Reimer and Bernard L. Friesen, Edwin B. Reimer, Martin B. Lowen, Abraham U. Wolf, and Peter F. Cornelson. Three other young men accompanied the families, Albert B. Reimer, Frank B. Lowen, and Abe D. Lowen. Several people who made the first trip are still alive today and share their experiences. I come ganz am Anfang with the first group. Ach, ich bin dann 28 Jahre. 
Jo, jag är befriad. Vi har det även känner med här. Jag är mest nära en tid när jag känner att det är det första trakloden. Vi fungerar med bassa an från Mexiko och det är lätt att få med trax. Så jag nämner att det är det första trakloden. Vi är där till personen. Arriving at the border, the first settlers realized that their papers were not complete. This was quickly attended to in Chetumal, and when the immigration officials realized that these people were the Mennonite colonists who they had been expecting, they became very friendly and gave the group a very hearty welcome. By 1 a.m. on the 13th of March, the group was in Belize City. Mr. Gerard Penner recalls his first impressions of Belize. Well, as we chat them all for later, they didn't have the bus to the Nobles City for us. The first we had to get on the ferry, where we must stay for us. There we were from, in Orange Walk. We were on the ferry, we had to go there. And then, as we first had to get on the city, we had to say to us, we had to go to the city. Framed out and we will not leave the hotel. We are the only ones who did. Forty of us are mass China up in up the gas. The Albert Street where they come in poor trucks, see no. Over we saw the swine up the gas, saw the hoi up the gas, and many many bicycles for us. That we are in the air framed. Mr. Emery King met them in Belize City and hired two trucks to transport them and their goods to Spanish Lookout. Where I am that first to say we are as we from Belize City up a bus, not here where I come. We hide them at, and we since the way here know there's a colony, and they don't encourage them at. Mat dat wordt hier schaven en dan krijg je met even river wordt schaven en dan voer hij met twee. We kijken met twee trucks op elkaar neer op een truck weer wie mensen boven en de andere truck daar weer dat eet alle boven. Ik weet we hebben meer gekocht en zakken. Upon arrival, the foreman Mr. Peter Friesen went to Mrs. Olga Cooper and made the initial payment for the land. Abraham Lowen recalls the group's arrival at Spanish Lookout. Okay, here is that. That's where we are all as an ever come on the hour fifty. And uh, that has been ended. Here we done beach. Here we always this is called all the beach. Not all the people were there. Not many the beaches were. But that's the state where all the ever come is. And then we the three tits and the river we left. I came at the first four mat. And then we were starting to water water. I took my foot out and and went there. Went ganz there and then we so as bein lang we so deep we take three so deep out, three and a half. Then went flying the first trail up. We came in that way. We came in so deep far. We didn't need to get a truck to take me from where I met. We are three Spanish like all come. Here we need one meter away. We fungo. We will at least on bus stand. On the river, we are not on full bus. You wasa. They didn't make a hug in the cover. They didn't hear we free of five mile and pit now. You read it. We are. We not call it. Now we're bush mula trails. You know, we're doing. We're chickly a draw. Right. So we're doing. We're mule trails. We're mula trails. You know, we're doing. The work of establishing a settlement began right away. When they brought out their families, they had Mr. Burns put a big shed attached, and that's where the ladies they live, and they lived there for months while the surveyor came in and surveyed packages for them that they can move, but they had it rough. Well, that guy was national that up person. That's your The men started building houses for the families.
En de eerste aansiedeling door een spinnerstuk uit, dat we de hem hebben, we in de zomer weer van Aja, we de um, zomer afwerks waar je woont, hem de langs uh, zo. En daarom en de plaat wordt uh, meer in Hizé buurt. Maar het eerste kwam we dan een nap en dan uh, weer een huis waar we dan bij acht families nemen kunnen, te nacht. En dat we nog een paar kleine tien bij vierten huis waar we vijf paar jonge koppels te nacht blijven. In those early days, the entire colony came together for meals at one location. The women prepared and cooked outdoors. Then everyone sat down inside the house and ate. Well, that we are all afraid, we couldn't wish to go cry what we what we would well eat or I play we have not made it chuck you craft. The Zana coin we don't each fun. Come nach the Zana dot uh put a fresh day day on my back. And we under help her down at eight the morgue, and then we do and dash and that old house. And then came the aunties and the youngest eerst na and eten. And the change they said we on a want to for lang day we day to eat up a floor. And then no then they'd be freely eat on dash. The man said how the yvonne is twice stunned marah. It's that Zaya warm we are. I come if not from the Zana dot ain't oh and down for mijn oomtje, oomtje Piet Knelsen. En dat andere weet ik niet, wat Peter Vriesen is, die was er bij een Vriesen met een Spanje met op, op mijn laam en voor de vers. En die had een fijn, een grote vers, die kreeg en die uit we er ook nog hebben. Wie dat kan ik me niet bezijn, dat we haar vlees gehad. En de Peter Vriesen deed meestens dat alle aan mijn baak wat te veel. En ik kan mijn mening nog zijn, want zij, zij had die valt je maar af en in een trap afbroek. Dan had ze de foto zelf even uh, uitgewerkt. En dat zij dan op de trappen zat en dat nog de deeg kneden. Dus we hadden daar twee oogers buiten en we hadden daar nog langer die trappen op te gaan naar boven. Dat weet ik niet graag wel veel. En die broek de deeg, dat moet ik Peter Vriesig de zei, de fout verwerkt. Pieter zei, dit plus de taglood, en dat zijn we niet. Dan voelt u maar aan de knie aan en ik wil een fout, dan wil we maar zijn voor dat je er wat van maken. En dan deed hij dat en dan kreeg ze dat, dat je smak traag, maar als hij dat dan dag nog zo weet, dat ze daarna veel heeft gezeten, maar je smeert met alcohol, dat hij dat dag nog deed wij. Natuurlijk moet je dat zien, dat het ganz, ganz beter wil. Dat was niet de enige accident die gebeurde. Only four days after they had reached Spanish lookout, a far more tragic event unfolded. Margaret Friesen drowned in the river when she rushed in to take a swim. And they were only going in. And then what on the rope from the nap in the river, they were just And then they were all here and saw that they were just going to go in. And they were all dead, they were drunk. They were 16 years old. The second group of 10 families arrived in Spanish Lookout on March 21st. They found that the first group had already begun to build a house for new arrivals. It was only 18 by 24 feet and the settlers quickly completed it that same day and were ready for their first night in Spanish Lookout. Ben Fries and Peter Fries and we, we sleep up in that house. De eerste nacht hadden we kleine baden. We hadden een paar matrazen gekocht. Maar mijn oomtje sluipen in de ene stoel met alle kleine bloes lekker op de vloer. De jackets aan je kop vlijt. As the days went by, more houses began popping up along the Spanish lookout beach. Mijn oude buurt ook een smak het niet het huis van niet het halt. En ik voel me zeer stolt met dat fijne huis. En van daar, uh, we hebben dan een aardige maand. Dan we we wordt op ons op in het land op je trakken. Wie daar aan wie daar Spanish look out naar van Rewa Waag naar de aan Bosnaan. Waar de twee hier zijn tegelijk je buurt. 
Die het maar bloos een draai, draai door weer in huis voor die vara, of die vaya. En wanneer het regen duid, dan schaft het zoveel dollar. Dan gingen we nog niet aan je dag. Dan vang het aan te wonen, wanneer het regen duid. Dan nooit we zo, en dan beschakt het. De tweede keer zijn we weer drie tijd. We hebben drie maanden dag geboren en dan twee keer met hier zijn van de mensen. En, en we hebben veel een blad. Minister Cornelia Speedy Reimer was in de second group, so they quickly built some benches and placed them under a large tree where they had their first service at Spanish Lookout, with a minister leading the service. The first prayer that we have is called Spider Reimer. I will the ones who are here at the beginning. We are. And Lothar took us back to here. Soon after, the community organized and built the first church. The first church was built on the river on the Sommelhof. It was built 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 on the Sommelhof. Da dag wir von Kohunbläder, und wenn er mehr abschalpen deide, und dann der Läng, der mit dich bei dich fast morgen, dort wird das Dag, was ich euch hört. Wir haben mit dem Sprote Tünn erramt, um die Tiere bitte heulen, doppelte Futter bei ihnen eng, um die Ritten näher zu gehen, und dann aus der zweite Kohl, die Bitte war, dass wir da bei in dem Platz zu der Asso Station, wo dort nu ist. Dort lecken sich sehr mit dort da, wo wir die Onge beim Röver haben. Aber die Onge scheint wir, dort wir nach mit Gerata in der Da, wo wir von Bay Leaves. Hast du dir da wieder noch schlafen? Nein, nicht sehr wieder. Hast du nicht auf? Ja. Hör mal auf, dann wird er eine Hand. Für den Kinder Basenbüt haben wir eine Kampfpen in Spähe. Ja, das war ja. Ja, hast du Bio eintreffen? Nein. Ja, dann geht's. Ich war nicht so schwer und es gab keine Schadenschaftung von Arbeit. There were good memories made daily in the day-to-day -day activities of the early colony as they learned to adjust to their new life in the Belizean jungle. What have you brought? Come. Hi, now hang up your dino. And the adjustment to the food was not that easy. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Und dann eine Nacht hat er vergeten, Stall zu machen, und dann muss er noch mal sehen, den Fuchs hängen ran, und dann holt er uns die Heine auf. Die Leute sind immer gleich schön ins Nü, und ich kann nicht die Verordnung, was andere Menschen haben. Ich will nicht, dass du arm war. Ich komme nicht von der Sonne, dass unsere Kinder sind krank geworden, wie wir haben. Die Gotthafen sind doch gesehen. Meine Brüder, die sollten doch alle, die eiert mir immer noch während der Zeit, die hier in der Macht, in der Hand durch das Herbalist, hat er wohl treiben. Und dann, die sollten schweigen, dann früh ich meine Brüder. So, das ist mir wirklich was verändert. Es kriegt dort, was ich haben wollte. Ja, also ich glaube, die Männer, das denke ich wahrscheinlich, meine Schweizer an. Ik wil leven wie houden moest aanstalen dat wie dat eten deed wordt. Wat had er gebeurd dan? Wat er dan weer? Niet te veel chipen gewonnen. 
That's a great canoe. Yeah, that's my exact thing. Then, uh, we done the sand pickles cork up in the stack. That you have to talk, you see, sand pickles. Yeah, be honest, we're each other, but it's my exact thing. Oh, that's your guys. It's a verschiedenes of broken. We have a lot, a lot of fun here, these young people. That's not the whole thing. I don't know if it's for the older people. But that we... That we can't make some things about that thing. That thing shine we are. There were no roads in the beginning, just muddy tracks. There was also no ferry, and so transporting goods, feed, and groceries was a challenge. It ain't it feel very, very bloody. We saw that the bridge that we can break the must. We need to feel broken blood. Zag draws feel how must we need in a pit hard to to read over that. We pit there read and when we stood for my two hours, cause it stopped and. Pierre nicht echt die Krieg können Bock der Drum, dass der Kurs alle verflohen, er alle nicht staubt und fliegt, was er lade ich trägen. Wo wir jetzt an die ganze Wirtschaft zum Wiederkommen, das meint in Wahrheit, dass wir mehr am Port in Wahrheit haben, als ja, die zum Lanzier oder zum Feitscheib oder zum Etecheib, wenn ich wollen wir haben, das meint in Wahrheit wieder. The colony purchased a D8 Caterpillar from Frank Norris, but didn't have very good results with it and returned it. Wenn der Kopf hier mehr die am Ohren in Greta Katum, the Eatum, the Grand Kulchiv, have we grown to be men who are not very far, I think the two, and those in three brain, and they are Jana who have kept. When you need to have a job to make a cat fix, then you have to take your axe and your chest, your land, your mark, and then you have to show off, and that's what they did. Then they purchased a D4 from Alberto Espat and Iskander Bedran. With the D4, they began to haul logs to the sawmill and the budding industry began. The D4 was also used for road construction. We had a D4 caterpillar you kept, and then from there, when we did the way, we wanted to upshrub, then had we the bulldozer shape you installed, and then we did that with a D4, and then we did in D2 the fair span to be back, and then the day we did the way up, up, we had a long time to up the shrub the way you shrub, but they did it like that. Die drei, die Nord und die dann führt das so deep gläsig, dass ich das mal alle kaputt. Wir müssen irgendwann, wenn wir drehen, die wird dann wird sehr blattig. Dann können wir nicht mit dem Traktor einfach vor, dann gehen wir zu Fout. Und wenn wir Holz nicht vorhanden wollen, dann gehen wir auch zu Fout. Wenn wir mit dem Traktor vor, dann bleiben wir hängen, weil es steckt und dann wird es viel länger. In a few months, many of the settlers purchased small tractors, and so log sawing and road building began in earnest. Die erste Jahre, die wir was durch die Grand führen deiden. Dat hebben we alle vrijwillig gedaan van de mensen wat tractors en trailers hadden. Arbeid, ieder een wordt een tax opgelegd van één maand en één dag in de maand moesten aan de aan de weg schaffen. Maar toen een wij buur, wie er rent, jij wie er mensen kan alle, wat wie deed eerst één, wat we willen wijzen ze mensen binnen afwachten aan en deed er met de sporen bij mij wel. Er werd was gravel afloren aan nap vier een beetje zonder iets te zijn. Dat deed de zag we een jaar wij komen dat schaffen. Dan wordt weer, we moesten den weg opschuiven. De zon moest dan tegen de weg opschuiven. Dan werd afgeleid, want als de eerd wordt rond je geleid, dan komen we met lange voor. By the end of May 1961, they had two miles of hard roads. Small farm tractors, such as the legendary Massey Ferguson 35, traveled the road. Well, my husband was always a businessman. His company was Guy F. Nord Limited. They wanted tractors. But they said they had no money. My husband told them, I give tractors at higher purchase. So every Mennonite had a Matthew Ferguson. So it was only their means of transportation, the tractor. So they would put a, a little trailer at the back and have the family there and the husband drive. But that was their means of transportation. Everywhere was a tractor. <laughs> 